see, but I'm here really representing the OCB working group and to give you a brief introduction to a kind of follow on tool that the OCB working group has been developing about how to prioritize identified PAMIs for OCB use. And so just to take a step back as to the purpose for this tool. So as you're aware, the GTFCC roadmap axis two talks about the multi-sectoral approach um, for prevention of cholera in hotspots and including the use of OCV as the bridge between emergency and longer term control through um, other WASH interventions. And so this year, the OCV preventive program launched in January and um, countries are now encouraged to develop a multi-year plan, MYP of action, documenting their OCB needs by year. And this is a component of the broader application that countries would submit to GAVI through their online portal. And the OCB working group um, saw that there was a gap to help uh, countries identify how to prioritize for this multi-year plan and so we had um, developed a tool to to fill this need um, the thinking is that the multi-year plans will also help inform vaccine forecasting to support some of the, the manufacturing um, decision making as well and just to clarify the OCV needs are really based off the identified PAMIs. So this tool is really being developed to follow on from the PAMI identification tool that you've just heard about. So just a quick overview of the efforts that were taken to develop the tool. So during January to April uh, last year, uh, we put together a sub-technical working group that met multiple times um, to identify the criteria and then develop the tool uh, to help countries with this activity. And this was then reviewed by the broader um, OCB working group and shared with the surveillance group to make sure we were aligning. Uh, this included focused, um, focusing on brainstorming, identifying the purpose of the OCV multi-year plan, key considerations for includence, in what we would be including in the guidance, and um, flexibility. Um, we obtained country perspectives as part of this on how they're currently prioritizing um, cholera hotspots for OCV use and then conducted a deep dive into the identified selection criteria to help discuss thresholds and guidance for scoring. So what we identified were sort of four main categories of criteria, including susceptibility. So how likely an area was to experience cholera reflecting previous OCV um, campaigns. Vulnerability. So did they have, for example, um, high risk populations, fishermen, IDP camps, et cetera. Transmission risk. Are they likely to have imported cases? And then um, an operational perspective, thinking of how the, the vaccine program would work to support this. Um, so th this is a very brief summary of how where we ended up versus the process. So jumping straight in here to the criteria that we identified, we had four mandatory criteria that we thought, thought were important for um, countries to ensure were a part of this consideration um, that fell under the different categories you can see here in the first column. So under susceptibility, this was um, OCV vaccination history in the past three years. Had they uh, received two doses with a relatively high coverage rate, 70% with an assumed minimal population change in that period. So this would, if they had received OCV in that period with good coverage, then you could assume some level of protection and potentially deprioritize them. Uh, under vulnerability, we had um, rated high-risk populations as highly important. And here you can see some examples such as refugee camps, ID, IDP camps, fishermen, um, or areas that were affected by complex humanitarian emergencies. And then under transmission risk, we had two criteria, one being high population density um, or overcrowded settings, for example, urban slums. And then lastly, uh, being adjacent to cholera affected areas or um, identified PAMIs where there was a risk of importation. 
We also identified optional criteria that countries could consider if they felt this was relevant to their context. Um, looking at recent transmission in the last 12 months um, or so, and under vulnerability, looking at the broader WASH um, criteria, um, access to safe drinking water, access to safely managed sanitation, households with um, hand washing facilities with soap and water, and then um, areas that were at risk for extreme climate and weather conditions. Um, these were slightly deprioritized because of spe specifically with the, the wash factors, concerns about availability of data at the level we're looking at. And under the operational considerations, um, these were really thinking about accessibility. Air, high priority areas may have security risks, which means it's not possible to vaccinate. Therefore, you may have to deprioritize them in terms of order of being vaccinated. Um, the seasonality of cholera, considering this is part of the preventive vaccination program, we want to make sure that we're ahead of the cholera season vaccinating in advance. And then um, a proposal to consider regional implementation. So even though when you're doing your um, PAMI analysis, when you're thinking of OCV implementation, you might find that your top priority areas are distributed across the country in, in various regions. But from the campaign perspective, you might want to target sort of regional areas at a time and for countries to review that in their context. Uh, and just to add, oh, before I get into the example of the tool, focusing on this initial phase where we're looking at kind of high burden, high risk areas that are being identified in these countries, from our perspective, really all of these areas are going to be eligible for being vaccinated. Um, so it would be maybe even areas at high risk of importation, I think, would still be considered eligible for vaccination. So just bearing that in mind as you're working through this. So we're kind of coming to this as this tool, really being able to help countries prioritize, is this area for year one, year two, year three as part of this plan or up to year five. Um, so here's an example of the tool that was developed. So you can see in the first column, this is very much phase two after your PAMI identification. So the, the PAMI score, the um, final index score would be in, incorporated here. And then the um, information on the different criteria. And this, this example just focuses on the mandatory criteria would be captured. Um, the difference between what's needed here versus what's needed in the PAMIs is that the vulnerability criteria are more to be used exceptionally from the PAMI perspective if you don't have good surveillance data in some of your um, geographical units. Whereas from the OCV planning perspective, we would need this vulnerability data for all of the, the PAMIs that you've identified as priorities to be able to then prioritize um, how to implement OCV. And then similar to how it was done for the PAMI um, tool, each area is scored and then a combined score is um, included at the end. So you can see um, for the final column, you've got the, the combined score for each of these geographical areas. And then this is an example of um, how you bring that into the operational considerations. And the tool helps you um, identify the required doses, capturing the target population, and then when you would want to, which month you are targeting and the year you are targeting as well, and summarizes with an overview per year of how many doses and how many areas you'll be vaccinating. So one of the key um, progress um, pieces that we, or activities that we had to work through was ensuring that we were aligned with the, the PAMI tool development and that, um, what we were suggesting uh, made sense in terms of following that activity. And so the OCB working group and the PAMI working group have had multiple meetings over the past sort of six months to try and make sure we're aligned. And this has um, been a great collaboration and we've been um, made sure that the criteria 
names are all aligned so we're not confusing people with what type of information we're asking for and that we hope to have um, the tool so that it can easily be copied over from the PAMI tool into the um, OCV tool and um, that where possible things that have already been collected on the PAMI tool would be automatically filled into the OCV prioritization tool and we're recommending that given some of this data will be part of the PAMI considerations that countries really try and do them close together in time so that one follows the other and it's not a whole new group of people trying to find the same data that's already been partially discussed for the, the PAMI development identification. So this was um, part of the pilot that was done in DRC and um, through that we identified some pieces that needed uh, fixing some was just like coding errors in the tool itself um, something else that was picked up on that we hadn't thought about when we were doing this was population adjustments over the time because it's a multi-year plan we need to make sure we've adjusted the population to reflect changes for needs to year two year three um, and then um, I guess the other thing that we're watching while we pilot this is kind of the consultants that are happening helping to put together the multi-year plans are the ones that have really been helping countries use this and so making sure how this works with the, the country programs as well um, so we're hoping to um, pilot this in um, Bangladesh as they uh, move forward with their next phase and also the other countries that we know are interested in developing their multi-year plan this year including Cameroon and Kenya um, and we'll be monitoring kind of the scoring and the prioritization and how this works through this and um, obviously next steps post that would be to disseminate to countries and have a version online but I think we're just trying to see how this aligns up with the outputs from countries experience to identify their their palmies and again to help inform the vaccine forecasting so thank you Thanks, Lucy. I think this is a, a great follow on to what we've been discussing today as uh, the OCV multi year planning is a really critical next step for what do we do after PAMIs have been identified. Um, I think maybe if we have one question, we can we can ask otherwise, um, we'll move on to the next session. Okay. Um, thank you for this uh, interesting presentation. It's very helpful. Um, just one question on the tool for the OCV vaccination planning forecasting Excel tool that you presented. Is there also a discussion about a single dose, yes, no, with the coverage and then the, the previous, you know, where was a recent OCV vaccination with a single dose? At the moment, we're just looking at two dose vaccination because we don't have strong data on how long um, the one dose protection will last. But I think that's um, we've got other subgroups at the moment looking at documenting OCV effectiveness to try and have like a published opinion from our working group representing GTFCC on um, one dose effectiveness. But I think that question leads into revaccination and how long after one dose could they prioritize areas for a second dose to have that um, maximum protection versus just focusing on two dose but I think the the purpose of the tool we were thinking primarily looking at previous preventive campaigns but I think um how long post sort of 12 months we want to look at the duration of one dose um, protection um, is we're, we're still kind of looking into how that will play out. 